I'm one of the good guys. Look good and bad can be in the eye of the beholder. He plays an LA detective caught in a not so sweet dilemma. They need you to stop looking. Who's they? Colin is John Sugar, and this PI's got a past. There's more to you than meets the eye. You have secrets. What would you love about Sugar? Just his kind of unbridled optimism, which gets cut into severely by the end of the show. His experience um, does kind of um, damage him at a certain point. Um, so that journey was lovely, particularly because of the starting place, because he started from such a place of absolute unbridled, as I say, faith in, in the human yeah. condition, having been exposed to such kind of brutality as well. You see him tackle the demons. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is a part of this, Absolutely, too. and yeah. when I read it first, you know, at the start of the show, those demons aren't apparent. Yeah. They're not clear. He keeps his cards close to his chest, as private detectives often do and should, of course. And what seemed very simple at the start began to be tastily complex by the end. After all this time, is this place starting to turn me upside down? In the series premiering April 5th, Sugar is hired to investigate the disappearance of a Hollywood producer's beloved granddaughter. They told me that you do one thing and one thing only. You find the missing. Only to uncover mysteries about the family that were never meant to be revealed. There was a sweetness at the center of it. The character yeah. was extraordinarily kind of optimistic for somebody who, who gets in the trenches and deals with the more dark aspects of the human condition and, and you know, his, 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 um, his stock in trade is returning lost people to their families, to their loved ones. So he's dealt with kidnapping and trafficking, and, and yet he still had this kind of sweet, almost childlike connection to the world around him and this belief in the good of human beings. And I thought that was an interesting lens through which to explore the world of noir, you know? It just seemed a little bit original because the world of noir and, and the, yeah. the tropes of the private detective are not original and and they're honored in this as well you know he lives alone he lives in a hotel room he ends up having a dog <laughs> right. you know all those things Colin's got some more dark noir on the way playing the penguin in the Batman spin-off you only seen what I could do so with that and this on the way did your kids were they more on board with this because I know that they said they're tired of seeing you play these bad guys they haven't read it they haven't seen it <laughs> but they'll be able to watch it they're both at the stage now in life where they can pretty much pretty much watch whatever they want. A lot of the stuff that I've done, particularly with the ages that they were, they could never have a look at. <laughs> but it doesn't mean, I mean, we have our own little Rotten Tomatoes committee of two at home. You yeah. know. Are my they honest my with you? Critics. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they would be. I mean, they'd be sensitive to my feelings, but yeah. <laughs> Not even Fantastic Beasts, though? They didn't oh yeah, Fantastic Beasts they could watch, Dumbo they could watch, and then Batman, and that's pretty much it after 25 years. <laughs> it's not a high strike rate. <laughs> What I love too, I was reading during the pandemic, I love that you were checking in with your kids and encouraging their emotional health. I used to be a teacher and before TV. Oh, and did was, you really? And I was in counseling. And so I loved that. I was like, way to go, that you were encouraging just their emotional health and really asking them how they were doing. Oh, yeah, and they don't want to know by telling me half the time. But just, <laughs> yeah. you know, you just want to, yeah, I suppose. Do you, do you have kids? Not yet, no. Yeah, you just don't, well, what do you want to do? You want to create an environment where they can come to you if they want to, and if yeah. they want to share and they need to share, that they can come to you with anything, I suppose, you know? Yeah, it's I cool. love that, though. I read that, I was like, that's amazing, because not all parents, especially but men, it's, but dads it's, with but their But of course, sons. what happens is, you know, they don't, as I said, they don't. <laughs> I'm like, I'm the dad I wish I had. Talk to me about your feelings. And they're like, no, fine, thank you. And yeah. then you have to honor that as well, you know? Yeah. It's just it's just making yourself available, that's yeah. all.